on to the final, if you can believe it, of our summer Bible classes. This one is John 17, Christ's High Priestly Prayer. Next week we're going to jump into the second half of the evangelism series that we started back in the spring. We're going to finish those off and then go into something different in October. Christ's High Priestly Prayer. True or false, Jesus didn't actually pray. Wouldn't that be like God talking to himself? Yeah. Jesus did actually pray. Two, Jesus' death was glorious. You can, you, you, you can say yes. It wasn't. I mean, it was a horrifying. If you've ever seen the different depictions, Passion of the Christ, different Hollywood portrayals of it, it was horrible. You're going to hear Jesus say that it was glory. That's okay. Three, God doesn't want to take us out of this world. <laughs> Aren't the best true and false ambiguous? Yeah. You're going to see how this can go either way. Yeah. Depending on what we'll look at. Number four, Christian unity can be based on sports leagues and civic service. Yeah, uh, I did participate in a Christian sports league when I played at uh, St. Clair's and Luther High School. It, it had a couple small public, public schools. It wasn't really a basis for Christian unity. It's the basis for us to play baseball. Good job. All right. Next, let's look at this first chunk here from John John 17, the first five verses. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. For one, how can Jesus pray to the Father? Aren't they really the same thing? That is God. They are God, but there's three sets. Yeah. Back in Trinity Sunday, I think that was like the first Sunday night we doing it. Uh, we, could, we say the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit. We just go down the list. The Athanasian Creed is that really long, obnoxious creed. Love it. Just, just lays it out so beautifully what God is and is not. Because there's a lot of confusion. There is absolutely nothing wrong with Jesus talking to God the Father. Is God, is the Godhead talking to itself? I guess. That doesn't bother me. I mean, this happens at creation, too. This happened at the Tower of Babel. Let us go down and confuse the language. That, that led us seems odd when we pray to one God. We don't worship three gods. It's one God. It's kind of a trinity question. The, comp the compromands just kind of roll their eyes and go, yeah, it's a trinity pastor. Come on, take it. Yeah. Jesus spoke to the cross. Yeah. All over. Yeah. Well, well said. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with this at all. Next chunk. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Number two is maybe a bad question. I wasn't exactly sure how, how to word this. Does this sound odd to your is there something about Luke chapter, or John, sorry, John 17 that is painful to read, you Western-minded person? There is a fundamental shift as you read the Gospel of John versus any of the Pauline epistles. Maybe you didn't even notice. As John writes, whether it be his letters, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, or even Revelation, those books are all written in a big circle. And it sounds like Jesus is talking in circles all through this chapter. 
and it's difficult. My mind just does not appreciate that thought. However, most of the world, if you go to Africa, parts of India, even parts of the Chinese cultures, they don't necessarily like our telic from one end to the other mindset. They love, love hitting the point, going back, hitting the point, going back, hitting the point, going back, hit the same point, going back, hitting the same point you hit three times ago, going back. It just is beautiful. They just love it. They eat it up. It bothers me. He already said it. Why is he saying it again? Because there's nothing wrong with it, number one. And number two, that's how a lot of people's minds work. Even if it bugs my Western thought. I just had to get that out there. Because every time I go into the Gospel of John, it just like shakes me. And I will even admit that modern advertising, well, <laughs> modern advertising. Do you know how many times the uh, Commission on Evangelism, of which I'm a part of, or our church body, says you have to go visit someone before they'll actually attend church? Well, and that's just inviting. That's just inviting. Like if you, in, if, if you invite someone, this is a little off topic, but it's a good point. If you invite someone, they have an obligation now because they might like you and they don't want to disappoint you. Leverage your friendship for the gospel. Next point, Luke 24. Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. What is glorious about Jesus' work? And then what is glorious about Jesus' hands and feet? He came back from the dead, excellent, and in doing so, he, that, yeah, Easter's the proof. Easter is the proof. Good Friday's the payment, Easter's the proof. Easter is the proof that because he lives, your tomb will be empty one day. Now, what's the deal with the hands and feet? Yeah, there's holes there. There's holes there. I thought when I rise from the dead, I get a glorified body. That means that my shoulder will no longer slip out every time I go like this too hard. What's with the scars? His hands and feet. Why, 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 don't, why didn't those get fixed on Jesus' body? Because they were glorious. They were physical scars for us to believe. There's nothing wrong with those holes that you'll be able to see through. You can hold it up and you can see straight through his hands. That is the proof. Oh, how cool would that be one day to stick your finger straight through? Not because you're a doubting Thomas, but because, well, it'd be cool. To, it's kind of like going on a roller coaster. Man, yeah, would that be cool? Put your finger right through that hand. Yeah. See that hole. That's the hole that held Jesus to the cross. That's where the nail is. It is, in fact, glory. Because he won the salvation. I don't know if there's anything more glory. Winning world salvation. John 17, 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus doesn't pray that the Father would take us out of this world. What is his prayer? Protection. Yeah, and what is the chief means of protection there? The reason why I tacked on that last verse. The gospel, yeah, it's God's word. You may not even think that's what keeps you safe, but remember what the danger is. It's not terrorist attack, per se. It's not flash flooding last night that we saw in Winston. I'm not even sure where my house was spared, but... Over four inches of rain in parts of Winston Salem last night. Did any of you see that? It's a small thing for my God to protect us from any of this, but the point is the main means of protection for you against temptation, Satan himself is God's word. Every day go into it. John 17, 22. 
I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. What must be the basis for unity? Yeah. Truth. Yeah, that is kind of a cool glowing version of that bumper sticker. But do um, you understand the concept of this? I've, I think I've touched on this before. You know the different faiths? I guess I did this at, at Camp Key Road for you. Do you know what the first one is? That's Islam, yeah. Next. Hippies, peace, baby, yeah. Next one. Evolution, yeah, or some also throw in uh, gay rights and gender stuff where God made me a man or a woman. I don't like it. I just change it. What about the next one? Star David, yep. Keep going. What is that pentagram doing there? That's pagan. No, 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 that's, that's neo-pagan. Yeah, think any earth worshippers. Luke meant his first pagan. He went to early college, general population. Yeah. yeah, they're out there. And these are, again, these are not to be vilified. This is objects of your witness. By all means, see them as blood-bought souls for whom Jesus died. Next one. Ying and the Yang, that's the Eastern balance. Taoism. Yeah. Finally, that's the cross. Yeah, we know that one. That's Christianity. So, are they all equal? <laughs> no. And again, under the protections of our of our nation, I would die for them as a citizen of the United States of America, for them to worship however they lie. I don't think it's equal to Christianity. My word. That's terrible. Yeah, I will. I pray as God gives me strength to witness that there is only one way, and that is my God. Jesus is the only, the only name under heaven given to men by, by which we can be saved. And last plug from Romans. I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. What are two reasons we should follow God's command to keep away from false? There's a few. True, God says, they could influence you. That's one. They could cause division. It could lead others away. I only said two. You guys already gave me three. What happens to that person who's causing the division, even if they don't know it? If you just say, man, who cares? What kind of a witness are you giving to them? Yeah. One of the reasons why I don't share pulpits with all the churches around us is because of my witness to them saying those differences matter. And every word of God is important. And so it's my witness to them. That's my love toward them that this is wrong. I would want all of you to do the same to me. Pastor, what you're doing is wrong. You need to change. That's the witness that we owe each other. Any questions on... I don't see it as divisiveness as much as it is loving. I mean, you want to point out something wrong to someone. It's mean to just let them go Say nothing. Say this closing prayer with me. Lord Jesus, teach us to pray selflessly, in sincerity, boldly, and confidently, according to your will and in your saving name. Any questions on the high priestly prayer? Try to ask that at least once in the Bible. Class. If not, may God give you all a blessed week.